Unfortunately, my speech is long, and <clears throat> I would like to thank you for uh, inviting me to this distinguished uh, meeting to Miss uh, Professor Doctor Professor Raymond Galiabalta and other contributors. And uh, um, okay. Uh, I can change, but uh, how many people don't know English? Sorry, one. Um, but uh, I will share some things with them. They are Turkish. Share one with them. Denge var yani, denge var. Denge var. There will be balance between them. Okay. Um, Uh, actually, there are some traditional explanations for human cruelties. Um, the traditional explanation for human cruelty uh, is in terms of evil. But the concept of evil is unscientific and un unhelpful. It implies that the person is possessed some spiritual force. Actually, we can explain human cruelty with law of empathy. Empathy has two distinct components, cognitive and affective. Cognitive empathy is the ability to imagine someone else's thoughts and feelings, putting ourselves into someone, putting ourselves into someone else's shoes. Cognitive empathy is the recognition part. Affective empathy is the drive to respond with an appropriate emotion to someone else's thinking or feeling. At this point, low affective empathy is, the, is a necessary factor to explain human cruelty. So, the time is limited, that is why I need to apply the text. Zaman sınırlı olduğu için text'e başvurmak zorundayım. Normalde spontan konuşuyorum. One of the big reasons of low empathy is this. Empathy evolved for in-group not for our group. One group members describe our group members subhuman or infidels. If we dehumanize a group as, as the enemy or infidel, we have the potential to lose our empathy and catastrophic events happen to others. It leads to immigration, deportation or mass killings. But according to Baron Cohen, there are other social and biological factors that can lead an individual to, uh, to have low empathy. One social factor is obedience to authority. If a person follows all orders, his or her empathic energy can be rolled. In wars, this factor is particularly essential. And the second factor is ideology. Some people are in the grip of strongly held belief that they are, they are doing the right thing. During the breakdown of the Ottoman Empire, nationalist ideologies were dominant all around the world and after the Balkan War and the First World War, millions of people immigrated to other countries. But none of these social factors can explain psychopaths. This is a biological factor which leads an individual to commit crimes. Although human being has, has a tendency of other person's pain and joy, as for our group, empathy has often been missing. This is my starting point, point for discussing the potentials and possibilities of cinema for picking up another person's thoughts and feelings. And now it is time to clarify the possibilities of cinema on high level of empathy. As film theorists, crackers, German film theorists, argues, films have both recording and revealing functions. 
Decoding functions involve movements. Movements may be classified under a few items. The chase, dancing and nascent motion. Nascent motion means if any action in cinema stops for a while, our inner motion nevertheless may continue. The movement in us may us may lead to increase affective empathy. To illustrate it, let me show these two scenes. Uh, one of them is uh, a documentary from Balkan War, uh, and the other is uh, two villages of population exchange. Balkan Harbi göçmenlerinin tarihsizliği, nefes almaya fırsat bile bulamadan Birinci Dünya Savaşı'nın başlamasıydı. Birçoğu iskan edilemedi.
Eva and her sister Magda arrives at New York City because immigrants look for a better life in America. In Poland, there is a war and her parents are killed. While Eva is almost departed, deported, Bruno, who you see at the beginning of the movie, helps her. In fact, he is a person who tries to benefit from the immigrants' despairs. Bruno forces Eva to be prostitute. Immigrants mean money in the United States. Thus, this inanimate object, Statue of Liberty, represents the paradox. On the one hand, immigrants coming to the United States with the hope of being free and happy. And on the other hand, immigrants, immigrants who are exploited and enslaved in the United States. And another scene, Balkan War, 1912-1913. Balkan bozgununun yaşandığı 1912 Kasım'dan 1913 yılı ortasına kadar geçen sürede Anadolu'ya Trakya'dan 200 bin, Makedonya'dan 240 bin olmak üzere toplam 440 bin göçmen geldi. And as you see, uh, with camera we see a refugee camp in which oxes, cows, houses, ox carts, trees, mountains, as well as standing and mobile kids. This is taken from Balkan book. <coughs> and another documentary, Sorrow of Homeland of Separateness. Actually, it is a documentary uh, about the Greek exchange population deal. You see the, the, the inanimate objects which trigger a feeling about immigrants. And uh, and uh, these have also revealing functions. Um, what are they? They can be classified under three items. Uh, one, and the first one is revealing things normal and unseen, revealing phenomena of overwhelming consciousness. In Turkish, we are saying birinci akıllatan fenomenler. The second one, and the third one, revealing special modes of reality. And uh, revealing things normal and unseen. What are they? Under normal circumstances, under normal circumstances, uh, three three kinds of material may be hidden by our observation. Uh, one, two small things to be seen readily and two big things uh, to be taken fully. Tranching things and movements, blind spots of mind. And let's have a look at this material with some illustration. The first one is objects too small to be readily noticed. In real life, even if we see an immigrant, we cannot easily notice his face or hands. These things are missing. Faces are very important for empathic discussion. As film philosopher G. Deleuze termed, close up showing faces and other body parts is affection image. It impresses upon our inner conditions. Cinema makes visible normal unseen small things. Now I am going to illustrate with some movies. Rembetico. This movie shows the life of refugees emigrating from Turkey to Greece during the Ottoman breakdown. It's based on real life of a famous Rembetico woman singer. She was born in Izmir, Smyrna in 1917 and immigrated to Greece in uh, 1922 to when she was when she was seven years old.
exercise is the eyes of the child. Is the eyes of the child. Um, uh, the, the child is looking at us uh, and and her eyes penetrate the dark and it close up, we encounter her eyes. Our body activates and empathizes with the child. And another scene, uh, another scene is coming from the grandpapa's people, the Deminsanları. The director, the director uh, Chanur Mak, uh, in this movie, tells, the, tells his grandfather's refugee, refugee life in Turkey. I want you to focus the hand system challenge. And you see the pain, 
you see the pain and grief uh, in his face. In his face, this is the generic case. This is my terminology, generic case. I think not only coming from Turkish side, but standing for from all humanity, generic humanity. And uh, this is another face. This is another face. Um, an old Greek woman's face immigrated to Greece in 1920s. As you see, while, while telling her deportation story, uh, while telling her deportation story, um, her face coordinates with her story and pain. You may notice the emotional response in her facial expression while expressing herself. And, and two big things to be taken fully. Another function of moving. Uh, we cannot perceive or grasp the uh, craft of refugees easily. Our eyes are not enough to see them completely. Masses of people cannot be captured from different angles without moving. But camera shows all details from different points of angles. A few examples. The first one is taken from Balkan War documentary. And the second one is taken from the grandpapa's people. And there is another problem. One. Ah, sorry. There is no problem. Okay. Topluca boğuşan imparatorluk, çaresizlik içinde İstanbul'a ve Anadolu'ya göçen evlatlarına sahip çıkamadı. Binlerce muhacir, aylarca sur diplerinde, çadırlarda, cami avlularında yaşamak zorunda kaldı. And this is grandpapa's people. In this movie scene, there are different shots. Mid shots, close ups and long shots.
there are different shots here. Uh, in the long shot, you see the face and also chinic of the people. And uh, because of these shots, you can see the big things that you cannot normally use, see or with your eyes. And, uh, and the tragic things and moments. Um, our eyes cannot cannot capture cannot capture transient things and moments. And let me show a scene about the uh, Saruman land. Saruman land. The, the documentary Saruman land is about the famous writer William Saruman's Turkey journey. Saruman was born in 1908 in the United States as an immigrant child. The documentary focuses on 19. Uh, on this 1963 journey to Bikis. So what is one's country? Is it land of the earth in a specific place? Rivers there? Lakes? The sky there? The way the moon comes up there? And the sun? Is one's country the trees, the vineyards, the grass, the birds, the rocks, the hills and mountains and valleys? Is it the temperature of the place in spring and summer and winter? The huts and houses, the streets of cities, the tables and chairs and the drinking of tea and talking? peach ripening in summer heat on the bow? Is it the dead in the earth there? Is it the sound of the spoken language in all the places of that country under the sky? What the song of the shadows? The song of that throat and heart? That dance? Is one's country their prayers of thanks for air and water and earth and fire and life? Is it their eyes, their lips smiling, the grief? This is the ending of the documentary. And you see the shadow of the man passing, passing uh, through the road, over a cloud passing across the valley and over the mountain, thunder and rain. These are fleeting impressions in a movie. In a few minutes, these transient things and moments happen. The transient images may contribute to audience to be identified with the son of immigrant. And <coughs> uh, slow motion as well increases the dramatic effect of immigration and tragedies of refugees. We feel time and process of immigration by slow motion. To illustrate the slow motion in an immigration film, Let's have a look at a scene taken from two villages of population exchange, the documentary. Okay. 
Peki'ye bağlı Kayıköy'de toplam 10 yıl yaşamış ama çocukluk yıllarının geçtiği güzel anılarla dolu Kayaköy'den o zaman kağıdıyla Nevis'ten hala After watching the documentary, she has changed the film effects on immigrants' children. And phenomena of overwhelming consciousness. <clears throat> This function is particularly related to my topic. Why? Because wars, exiles, atrocities, deportations, acts of violence, terror and death are events which tend to overwhelm consciousness. Refugees would suffer agonies and be under trauma. How can they reveal their hidden and suppressed memories? Films can be a therapy channel for refugees to get over their traumatic situations. By showing events overwhelming consciousness, cinema can also contribute to common perception and feeling on human tragedies. Now I am going to illustrate this function with a scene Grandpapa's people Thank you. 
Eva and Ma her sister Magda's family were killed by soldiers. And uh, you see the dream in different colors, different color and slow motion. This dream appears in a way as Eva has it. While Eva has dream, audience also penetrates it, uh, empathizes with her desires and pain. I am almost finished. I am almost to finish my uh, presentation. Sorry, it is long. And uh, conclusion: the general immigration problems in films. For my presentation, I analyzed six films, uh, six documentaries, and four fictional films. And <clears throat> both documentaries and fictional films focus on these refugee problems: language. Exploitation, in between state, humiliation, and local community pressure. The first one is language, language issue. Uh, even though Turk and Greek immigrants are supposed to know their own language, they just speak and understand their workplaces language. These problems turns out when they arrive on the immigration land. I have shown a scene from Grand Papa's people illustrating this point. As you see, on the day, on the occasion of Mustafa's death, the captain speaks Turkish, but Mustafa's father, Hassan, doesn't understand. And let me show you another scene from this, uh, from this movie. Um, Well, the first thing to do is to change that name. You 
Want an American name, Lloyd? Boy, there's production. I know, I know. Boy, there's, that's enough. Boy, there's, that's all you need here. Boy, there's. Here. Can you read? Εγώ τώρα ήσασταν οι γονεί μου, πήγα από μου και άλλου, γιατί δεν είπα εγώ, δεν θυμάμαι τίποτα από αυτά. 
Όταν ήρθαμε στη Μάτρη, μετά από σαν δύσκημα, ε, εκεί στι βροχέ με τα χιόνια, ήταν μια πιο άσχημη εποχή από τώρα, ήταν πολύ κρύο τότε. Όταν πα και είχαμε χιόνια, χιόνια να φανταστείτε, και μένα σαν δύσκημα μέσα όλοι μαζί. Τα κομμύρια φτώχεια, μα κυνηγούσαν και δεν του αρέσει να είμαστε εδώ πέρα. Τα μαραθώνα δεν μα θέλουν. I have given some clues about this issue. Now I want to show how it works and keeps its effects in, in on the ground children. And there are two, there are four uh, movie scenes about this issue. And it is connected. Concepts 
and artworks, artworks with sense. Cinema as an, as an art addresses to our feelings. Feeling is a starting point to empathize with output. In this sense, cinema presents a huge possibility for empathizing with immigrants and refugees. Thanks. Nasıl film izlemeli, 
imajlar üzerinde nasıl yorum yapmalıyız sorusu üzerinde de düşünmemiz lazım. Yani ilkokuldan itibaren ortaokulda devam etmek üzere filmleri okuma, filmler üzerinde düşünme, konuşma bize son derece önemli fırsatlar sağlayacak. E, çünkü didaktik bir anlatım, e, biz bilim insanlarıyız, bil, bilmekteyiz. Didaktik anlatım soğuktur. Didaktik anlatım mesafelidir. Onun için mutlaka duygusal bağlantı gerekli. Bu noktada da içinde yaşadığımız krizlerde de empatinin inşasında mutlaka filmlere yer verilmeli. Sizin bahsettiğiniz sorun da dahil olmak üzere. Teşekkür ederiz sevgiler. Başka bir soru var mı? Aa, If I may, I want to question each speaker. If I may stay with the start of Professor Pastrick. Uh, the examples you showed and the explanation of these phenomena, I mean, they, they all show uh, very powerful emotions that are evoked through different methods. Um, are there also films uh, that were produced to, um, to show uh, what, what can I bring? I call a human with the receiving country. I mean, do we also have very emotional films like that of Turkish refugees arriving from uh, Western Thrace in Turkey and how they are welcomed? And there are also films of that sort of blending into the new society that carry such strong emotional feelings. I know it's part of the nationalist uh, discourse, but can this also translate into strong emotional pictures of the Soviet Soviet? And the question to Arya uh, Hanfak, uh, uh, uh, uh, sizin bahsettiğiniz uh, sanatkar, meşhur uh, insanlar, zengin insanlar, buraya gelenler, beyaz Ruslar, Onlar ne zaman daha çok kendilerini bu ülkenin bir parçasını olmayı karar vermiş? Birisi nesilde ve ikincisi oldu. Yoksa döndüler mi diye bir ara? Evet. Gelenlerin büyük çoğunluğu, yani farklı tarihçiler, farklı farklı rakamlar vermektiler ama 1917 ile 20 arasında toplam olarak yani Rusya'dan göçen Türkiye ve diğer ülkelere göçenlerin sayısının 3 milyonun üzerinde olduğu söyleniyor. Fakat Türkiye'ye gelenlerin büyük çoğunluğu daha sonraki yıllarda, 3 ya da 4 yıl sonra buraya bir geçiş olarak kullanıp Avrupa'nın çeşitli ülkelerine en çok sanatın en yaygın olduğu ve kullanıldığı alanlara gidiyorlar. İşte Fransa'ya gidiyorlar, İngiltere'ye gidiyorlar, Amerika'ya gidenler çok oluyor. Ee, çok az bir kısmı burada kalıyor. Mesela göçleri biraz önce söylemeyi unuttum. Biz Kars'taki biliyorsunuz kaşar peynirinin yapımını, yapımını bile Rusya'dan gelen Molakanlardan öğrenmişiz. Molakanlar Rusya'nın bir bölümünde daha önceki yıllarda onlar biraz Rus göçünden önce Ee, silahı reddettikleri için gelen insanlar, e, silah o kendi e, inançlarına göre e, Tanrı'nın yasakladığı bir şey, çok doğru da bir yasak, keşke herkes aynı fikirde olsa. Kars'a yerleşiyorlar, orada ziraatçılığı öğretiyorlar o bölgedeki insanlara, peynir yapmayı öğretiyorlar, süt işini öğretiyorlar. Fakat savaşın başladığı yıllarda biz o insanları silah kullanmaya zorladığımız için onlar da oradan tekrar başka ülkelere, silah reddettikleri için göçüyorlar. Yani e, daha sonraki yıllarda çok iyi ev sahipliği yapamadığımız için ya da beklentilerini aldığı eğitimlerin karşılığını veremediğimiz için zaten geldiği zamanlarda Cumhuriyet henüz kurulmamış bile ne yazık ki onlar çok uzun süre burada barınamıyorlar ve bir geçiş yeri olarak kullanıyorlar İstanbul'u. Okay. Um, I am not specialized in immigration problems. Uh, actually, I made lots of history, history books, history studies. Uh, but Emanuelia Balta called me uh, about this about this meeting. That is why I need to search about some movies which are related to immigration problems. And uh, in Turkey, there are some movies, but uh, as far as I know. Uh, Actually, we, we need to search some movies all around the world. I mean, 
I don't have any idea about uh, immigration movies. Uh, uh, before before coming here, I found a few movies, but unfortunately I couldn't reach them and I couldn't download or I couldn't find any CD or other thing, other uh, stuff. Uh, that is why maybe in the future I can uh, make a search, do a search about this issue. I can find some movies and I can show another presentation. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, yes, please. Yeah. Thank you very much for the uh, fascinating presentation, which particularly underlined the, the power of the visual image, uh, the power to uh, create emotions, but it also, to me on the other hand, also um, was a striking example of how vulnerable it also is because if we were to, if we had used, if we had used different kind of music under many of these clips, the emotion would be completely different. So my question is, um, how do you deal with the vulnerability of the image in connection, well, this, uh, uh, connection with the way uh, the portrayal, I mean, the, the cameras, the, the angle as it were, and the music <coughs> in the creation of reality? So, obviously you could also, um, it would be just as easy to create some kind of propaganda film with the material that you, um, that you presented. So I, my question really is, um, how, do you, do you, how do you deal with, especially with using film as historical material with the way that the, um, the filmmaker and maybe the uh, composer works with it to create emotion? Um. Um, there are some discussions about uh, about the movies, which some people believe, some directors or some philosophers or some movie theorists, theorists claim that um, we need to reflect the reality, and in order to create reality, in order to construct reality, we need to compose some elements like music, like sound, like visual images and we have to compose all of them and um, but some some of some some theorists and philosophers uh, are against this idea in order to create the thought we should uh, make a separation between music sounds and visual images i mean we need to break them break them in order to create the thought so this is debatable issue and um, uh, but the first thing that I would like to say is that um, movies, you know, movies um, actually, if, if we if we describe the cinema, sometimes we don't find any description, any definition. Cinema is like impure art, impure. What what does it mean? You you look at you look at the raw material uh, in the real life, and you should find this raw material, and you should combine both all of them, and you need to purify you need to purify them. And at this point, cinema is uh, different from other arts. In other arts, you know, such as for example, you can take a painter. Painter has an idea and. This idea can be objectified in, on the canvas, you know, on the canvas. Uh, but in the cinema, okay, you can look at the real life, and there are there are there are many raw materials around us, around you, and uh, you should just take B two parts of them. Uh, you need to you don't need to know the technical details of the music. You don't need to know the um, how can I say the technical um, technical issues and you don't have an idea about the music but you are just taking piece of music but it is beautiful music beautiful music and you should combine these beautiful parts in order to create some emotion on the people so uh, I think cinema directors uh, focus on the focus on the uh, aesthetic issues and they combine the raw material uh, by putting some aesthetic elements inside them and they need to provide uh, in order to create their art, I think. Uh, uh, I 
have an, another proposition if you wish. We can go in, the other, uh, in, in another room with a drink and we can discuss with <laughs> yes, more comfortable and uh, I think with some mezze and <laughs> some alcohol. <laughs> if you are free. Do you want to do that? Okay, thank you, thank you very much.